I'd like to call to order the Thursday, July 14, 2016 meeting of the Planning Board of the City of Northampton. Uh, we begin every meeting with public comment. This is public comment on anything that is not on the agenda. If you have comment on something other than the, the, what's on the agenda, you're welcome at this time. If not, then we'll move along with the agenda. Any public comment on anything not on the agenda? Seeing none. Okay, we'll go to our seven o'clock uh, continuation of a request for major site plan for the New England Urban Senior Living for new construction of 62 unit residential building with 9,000 square feet of ground floor commercial use and associated parking structure, a special permit for greater than five foot setback and special permit for more than one curb cut at 10 Holly Street. Is there a presentation? Thanks to Carolyn, there is. <laughs> I guess instead of talking to your backs, I'll start here, but to move the slides, that should go over there, right? Okay. Um, well, at, at our last meeting, there were a variety of questions and there were a variety of things that we discussed in the notes that we uh, took. I'm going to tell you the five things that I'm going to try to cover and then I'm going to go back over there and try to cover them. The, the PowerPoint presentation that I brought is the same one you saw last time, so I'm going to speed through some of that material unless somebody says pause or please go back to that. And instead focus on some new slides that we've inserted in there that further address uh, these five points. One of the questions I think that the board had last time was to understand a little bit better how this building looks from Bridge Street. And kind of related a little bit to that question was, uh, are we going to be able to see your rooftop uh, air conditioning equipment units up there? Uh, in the process of, of drawing that and including a slide for you, it's, it's fair to, for me to mention to you, at least even though this may not be something you asked to review, that we're scheduled to go back in front of the uh, downtown architecture committee on, you know, September, right? September. And one of the things that they were probably the most concerned about, or at least talked about the most, was our, uh, our call it our front elevation, the one that faces Holly. They uh, felt that there shouldn't be setbacks of any kind, that it should be a flatter um, facade, not unlike most of what you see down here on and uh, they uh, wanted a couple of shapes. We had something circular on there, and we had something triangular on there that related a little bit to the look of the front of the church. And they preferred that we not try to do that to really just adhere to the, the rhythm of what's out here. So we changed it. And in changing it, that changes our front elevation. It also changes the north and south elevation same time because you got a terrace up there at the top level that's set back. So that's gone and uh, <coughs> those are the elevations you'll be seeing. So I'm going to share that with you even though that may come later. They may not like that one either, but that's, mm -hmm. that's the most current version. Um, we also uh, were waiting at that time for the DPW to have a chance to review things that were in progress when we met last time. Carolyn probably is the best one to fill you in on the status, specific status of that, but I believe that they uh, finished that review. Uh, they gave us a list, we like lists, and uh, it had a number of things still on it, but I believe that their position, and maybe Carolyn can chime in and um, address this, that we uh, can probably proceed with what's been submitted. They seem satisfied with it so long as we address the items on that list before we go in for a building permit or go through that application process. Some of the items were as simple as typos and probably mistakes and labeling and mention of this or that. Um, and other things were things that they just expected to know more about or see more detail on later. Um, I'm prepared to, if I have uh, all of the sheets that the civil engineer prepared, that show the uh, layout of the stormwater and drainage system and the rain gardens and the various things that we introduced um, at the request of the DPW. Uh, 
uh, and I can go through that sheet with you. It's in the appendix part of this slideshow. Uh, please don't ask me to verify any of the calculations uh, on the stormwater runoff. Can't do that. But I can tell you how it's all going to work, where the water's going to get in there and where it's going to go, and how we're filtering it, and how some things <coughs> fit into that on the site. We also managed to, we started off the engineering process, and that's part of what caused the delay, where we were uh, uh, very close to, uh, well, let's see, was it 10,000 or 11,000 square feet of increased impervious area, or at least that's what the engineer felt. Um, we later subsequently determined that it wasn't that high after all, and further that we had reduced it down with some of these other features that I'm talking about to an area that's somewhere in the 2,500 square feet differential, so we're pretty close to a break even. And we really do intend to keep plugging away at that one as we go through further design and maybe get it down to zero. And then you also asked about the Phillips Street access. Um, Lee's here tonight. And uh, we met earlier with Marie and also with our nice neighbors here behind the church to discuss a couple of uh, really specific Stoddard um, details along property lines there. There's a lot going on right on those immediate property lines that we feel we need to coordinate now and probably for some time in the future. Um, so I do have a drawing in here that I'll show you regarding the basic interpretations of the things that that can or can't do or needs to do. And then uh, I believe on the Phillips Street thing that we kind of agreed earlier that we're going to make a commitment to continue that dialogue and see if there are some things we can do uh, to improve uh, the privacy, the definition, and the appearance of that uh, driveway uh, on Marie's side of the, of the drive. The other side, as you might have been told or remember, has a existing hedge and a tree and the neighbor over there wanted to be sure that was going to be safe. That hedge is actually on or within, it's within the 30 foot easement. Um, so there's a break before you get to the existing pavement and that's where that hedge row sits. We aren't planning to do anything to make that hedge go away. Uh, we'd like to see it stay. It makes for a more pleasant drive. She'd like to keep privacy. And so that's the uh, intention there. All right, so with that in mind, I'm going to run over here so I can get to the slides. I think we all in agreement that this 
according to the survey, that that wall, the retaining wall that's there, was probably built when the church was built because they dug a big giant flat hole there in the corner and had to put that wall up so that uh, the Stoddard's yard wouldn't cave into the driveway there. The wall hasn't held up as well as the church and it's got some cracks and offsets in it, so we are, at this point, until we have a structural engineer, look at it thinking that it should be re-poured. Uh, probably could be patched, but I think reporting would be better long term. So anything we do would be done uh, either on uh, our side of that wall or on top of the wall to uh, create some greenery. There could be planter boxes on top of the wall. There could be some trellising that has vines on it. But based on the conversation we had uh, earlier today with the Sodders, they have some things in the works relative to uh, make some improvements here themselves. Um, the potential driveway that would come in uh, at about that location it has to get down the sidewalk level because right now the site's higher than that. And it would come back. Could you speak up a little bit? I'm sorry. And it would, uh, uh, they're planning on building a driveway that would come in at about that location to their yard and a garage back in about that location and so that has to go down to sidewalk level so earth will be taken out at this location for a while ways in order to ramp back to that garage and they'll be doing a curb cut there so our discussion today was that if that were going to happen there's really no need probably for the first part of this retaining wall right here because this grade and that grade are going to start to match up instead of being different like they are now um, so we are going to continue our discussions with them about the details of what landscaping might go on their side of the wall while we're doing all this tree planting and maybe create a more effective buffer for this very tall church uh, wall on this end of the, of the building by getting a row of trees in there. At the other end, we have shown the hedges that are there now staying. We thought there was an existing tree back here uh, that this neighbor was speaking of, but she really meant that tree, which we always plan to keep. This one, I guess, was there not all that long ago. There's a big giant trunk there, but the tree is dead. And uh, it's just a trunk with no leaves and very few limbs still on it. So I don't know about that one, but this this hedgerow would stay. And then we also are talking with Marie then about how, uh, and I will get to drawing in a minute, about how the four parking spaces that the easement called for her to be available to her, how those would be uh, placed in here. Based on today's discussion, there might be a little bit of adjustment to moving one of them back into here someplace so that we don't have it out here so close to the sidewalk. But I'll discuss how we get to that slide. Roof garden has stayed uh, the same as incorporated into the civil drawings as a feature. Uh, this is the facade change. Some of you may have the old one still from the last submittal. So the triangle at the top and the uh, sort of circular thing that happened further down is, is gone. And this follows much more stringently the written guidelines for window proportions, placement, maximum, you know, solid wall kinds of things. And while there are offsets here, they're much smaller offsets, like the buildings in downtown. So if you have a piece of stone here, it's a real piece of stone, and this sits back from that. Um, there's a small uh, offset here. And then when you take that chain and incorporate it into these elevations, it uh, changes the way this looked in your packet last time and also down at this end, the way it looked last time. Everything else here, I believe, is unchanged. 
this was in there, if you recall, just to remind all of us that even though we looked at the whole elevation, you really can't ever see it that way. The church sits here, and so a big chunk of this front piece, at least from Phillips in this direction, isn't very visible. Uh, this is a PowerPoint drawing that was put together to, and, and, and this is not a highly rendered thing, we just didn't have time for it, but this is the, what I just showed you, that chain. We have, uh, some of our buildings have pitched roofs. This one doesn't, it's a flat roof with a, a decent respectable drainage slope to get uh, water to go towards the inside down into our system. But we have parapets at the top of all of our walls all the way around. And then this view is that same drawing. The first one is taken at eye level down at the sidewalk back from back down in here. The second one is uh, you know, getting up high enough that we can all see what's sitting up there in that construction of the view. We typically put our uh, condenser units in the center or the hallway. That's where all the stuff's going up and down to the units. Uh, we have very few large units. We have a little bit uh, to do in our common area and a little bit for this retail area. So that's kind of what those represent. The development schedule is still 12 months out to any kind of construction or building permit. Uh, now these are the civil drawings and I, I'm pretty sure this can be kind of difficult to uh, see at this scale. But, um, we are, uh, we have a parking lot back here that's covered. Uh, there are no drains underneath there. There are drains for the green roof that sits above it. And it comes, it all drains over to this side of the roof, comes down in downspouts, and then is collected um, in our driveway area right about here. And, um, Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to slide. That's the existing condition. Great. All right, that looks more like a change plan. All right, uh, th these are contour lines that are being shown right there, but they're right in this location is are three things. There's a filtering mechanism for all the water that we collect off of this roof and the entire back part of the site goes through this filter first but then by goes over to uh, our uh, detention tanks and then whatever won't fit in there back flows to uh, a cistern that's 2,000 gallons that sits right here the purpose of that is we said the engineer from the beginning we wanted to collect rainwater that uh, we could use for gravity fed, we hope gravity fed irrigation of plant material on site. So that's what the cistern does. Once you get past there, this water flows down, goes into a, a drain here. Um, you can see all the way along the building on this edge is where the, the downspouts are coming down to go into this drain line. And then they go all the way down from here to that point. And from there, then there, well, actually from there, there's a rain garden filtering mechanism right here. And some of that water is sent over there first, comes back, and then goes out to the city uh, stormwater there. This, uh, this line here is, uh, again, I think this one's the sewer and this one's the water. Those will run down through the center of the building and service to the kitchen and bathrooms and so on. That's kind of a blow up detail of that, that three element piece back here. This water pretty much sheet flows, well it comes over to the side here, it goes down through a grass swale to help filter it and slow it down. It goes into a rain garden at the bottom of the parking lot first and then after it's filtered there then it goes out through this drain to the city.
Uh, that drawing is just representing some additional structural uh, work below areas of heavy impact. That's the drive that goes up from the main door up to the back. This is showing it at its highest point. So this would be the solder's property over, over here. These are the two buffers of 15 foot and 10 foot that we saw on the, on the site plan. This is a survey just for reference. This is what we were talking about um, with this retaining wall. It actually runs quite a ways. It comes all the way out to here. Um, it is on the church side of that property line. The new driveway they're contemplating would come in right about there. And so for some distance, we don't know what yet, but maybe from here to there, uh, this retaining wall could probably go away entirely. And then it would have to probably continue back here because this part of their property sits up above that by uh, five and a half to six feet. This is a sketch that we did. Uh, it's already wrong because of our meeting earlier, but it, it's a sketch that we did to show uh, this neighbor and Marie uh, our intentions here with this driveway in more detail. I think you all saw the easement last time. Our, our intention is that it's usable as ingress and egress. Um, she's entitled and, and has the ability to have four parking spaces somewhere in this arrangement or if she and we elect <coughs> together to do it, uh, we were contemplating today to move this parking space that's right here at the beginning up into this area or this area um, so that Fire trucks and other things coming in and out of here wouldn't, you know, they'd have a little more space. And we might be able to also add a little bit of green uh, there. We, we, we want to keep the turning radius good, but we might be able to sort of split the difference and do something there with some planting. This is the hedgerow that we plan to keep. That's the tree that isn't there anymore, and that's the one that is there that we plan to keep. And this is her driveway, so it's her garage. So that can't really park in front of that, so it has to, these four spaces have to either be here or we could move a car up into that area. This is that image we saw last time. It's, it's you know, still conceptual, but some kind of light standards, maybe some banners. This is the front door to the main common area where all relatives, visitors, and prospective residents and so on come and go. We would try to do some skinny, but but maybe affect like reed grass, tall stuff along the building there. Do what we can along this edge in containers on the wall, or as this driveway project unfolds, we might be able to take a foot or two that we could do more substantial planting that I think would soften that wall and create privacy for them at the same time that makes, makes our drive just kind of a win-win thing if we go down that road. <coughs> Uh, this one is wrong. We didn't get around to changing this particular sketch of view, so we can ignore that. But this was sort of an aerial of the whole, the whole thing. These were past projects from other places. This was the conceptual sketch for that rain garden at the bottom of the parking lot. One of several details of, of fencing. Um, trash enclosure that's on the north side over towards the post office side would be fully enclosed. This has a sort of trellis thing at the top. We're contemplating a solid roof to it and plantings on top of it for the people who live up here are looking down on uh, green space. This was to try to show how this, the effectiveness of the buffering zone <coughs> from Phillip Street looking peeking through the houses. There are things back there, walls, fences, garages, maybe new garage that help with some of that. And then, uh, so that's it. Just so everyone understands, what will happen now is that we will have a small conversation with the presenter. The public hearing remains open. Um, when we've exhausted questions, then we'll have questions from the public, uh, and then it will turn back to us uh, and have any final questions and, and any questions. So that's just kind of a order of events. So.
accept them. We're not ignoring the agreement. Um, I had a question about the, um, <coughs> I guess it's the north side near the post office. There is a driveway there. Well, there's an existing drive. Let's go back to the slide. There's an existing drive that <coughs> is there that goes up to a house that was used by the church for some years as a rectory. Uh, the location of that, the location of our <coughs> drive that you see on the, on the site plan here starts in Holly and comes up pretty much where that driveway is, but it uh, stops. The existing drive right now is here. It comes up and actually it goes all the way back to that garage right there. Let's go to the site plan. Okay, so come back. There you go. Uh, instead of going back to here where the garage is, our service drive starts here and comes back to this point. This is that trash enclosure with the green roof on it. Uh, so all deliveries, trash, and everything else will be fully enclosed and not visible to hopefully anybody. Uh, there's buffering and planning along the edge as well as the fence. We are trying to design this so that this does not look like a trash truck driveway <laughs> because trash trucks are only there 1% of the year or, or less. So we're trying to make it look like it's all part of the plaza whatever finish pavers these become. Now, where the truck travels, <coughs> we will put a lot of extra concrete under there and be sure it can handle it. This little space is left sort of open like this so that that truck can back up into there and go out or in and back up. Uh, but when the truck's gone, that space is available for whatever activity event functions going on. And hopefully it looks better than most service areas. I can't remember the stats of the DPW comments. Are those final or are those? Um, yeah, so we have final comments. There was a stormwater permit issue. Um, so there are a number of um, detailed comments and um, also comments about tree protection mm -hmm. and standards for tree. Um, well, th there are several issues related to the trees that the board should discuss. Um, and get more information and clarity on about the number of trees coming down and then the planting in the public right of way with soil type. Okay. Okay. Have you seen those comments? You're okay with those? Or? I saw David. I sent the um, tree warden's comments earlier this afternoon to you and David right. Payne. Uh, and I saw um, Dave Valetta's comments. Okay. Well, we've seen them both. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I saw the tree warden's comment. Oh, okay. Well, I can um, um, go over those um, whenever the board um, wants. I emailed them to three of you this afternoon. <laughs> oh, that here. Um, I'm sure there's not an issue there. We want them to stay alive as well. Um, as far as the tree removal, you want to back up to the one that had all the orange stuff all over it, maybe. So the issue about tree <coughs> removal is if there are, the tree warden in particular noted that some of the trees slated to come down okay. um, would good. trigger the tree replacement um, ordinance because they're over 20 inches DBH. So the, you need to calculate the total number of um, inches that are being taken off mm -hmm. that are above that. And we talked about that. Oh, okay. All we right. talked about that in the past. Okay. We have to replace whatever we take. If we take something down, we have to replace it with an equal uh, diameter, total diameter. Uh, right, caliper. Yeah. Caliper. Yeah. And, the, uh, and as far as I, I hope I get this right, but there's some. Um, there's some evergreen trees out here in the front which uh, need to go because that grade's going to come down eight feet or more to uh, get the retail storefronts. Um, there's a tree right here that uh, we said last time, I think it's a beach 
that we decided. <laughs> we were ambivalent about it staying or going. It actually couldn't fit into one of the planners we have in our plan. But our opinion was that it should go because if we spend the kind of money we're going to be spending to um, bring this church back into good repair and uh, good looking condition, maybe do some creative lighting, some kind of historical information about the neighborhood and the church in that neighborhood out here in the plaza, that we'd like people to be able to see that facade. And that tree in the summer is very effective at blocking the vast majority of that facade, certainly from this direction, less than from that direction. So we we're planting, we're not, we're planting a lot of trees and a few more were <coughs> credited against removal of that I think is good trade, but um, that one could go either way as far as we're concerned. There is a very small apple tree right there that the civil engineer said got very much in the way of his elaborate rain garden on that side to filter the water. Um, David, uh, were, we just, were we talking about replacing the trees that are currently on the town tree belt? You mean in the right away? Uh, no. Well, there is there yeah, is along there, right there. That, uh, is that tree on the town property or on the church property? This one's on, on the city property. Yeah. That one, I think there's one there on city property. So the other comment that the tree board noted was any or any trees that are removed in the city right of way require a public shade tree hearing. And okay. um, um, so you just need to go through that process. Yeah, that's fine. And we, as you know, we've got shown on our plan the anticipation of street trees all along here, along there, down Phillips, along here. So I guess the determination there would be, does that stay and work around it, or does it go and you put new ones in its place? Well, I think for this public, for the right-of-way trees, that's what the purpose of the hearing is. So you can pitch yep. what you're doing. The other comment for the tree warden is, because it's so close to the street, um, between the street and the sidewalk, that any new trees in that area should be planted with structural soils, and so that so the, they're much right. better at maintaining their long-term uh, viability. So That's all absolutely. that would be thrown, so particularly the ones that you're uh, removing during the hearing process, um, you would show on the plan, what, what your plan is, and then through that public hearing, um, mm -hmm. the tree um, committee can make the determination that way. That sounds fine. In, in general, regarding the tree removal, if you remove an eight-inch tree, you can replace it with two four-inch trees, for example. Right? In the city the, the right away? Right. The total diameter has to equal what you take down. Um, I think so. I, I don't know about the right-of-way trees. If it's if it's um, I think it's caliper for caliper mm -hmm. in the right-of-way. But, but there's a minimum off, too, right? Like you can't replace it with eight one-inch trees. For right, example, right. Right. There is a minimum. But for the private side, all the trees that trigger the replacement ordinance that are over 20 inches, that's a slightly different calculation because bigger trees, so you're starting with diameter measurements and going to caliper. So it's a half of, um, sort of half, but it's because you're planting smaller trees in the Okay. More question. Uh, could you spend a little more time on the, the curb cut on the parking lot to uh, off of Phillips to the, uh, there's some, a lot of comments in the last hearing about that the space and access to that space. Um, let's go back to the, yeah, all the way to that blow up sketch because even though that parking space I mentioned may not stay there. The on, on our site plan that we resubmitted and on this sketch I'm going to we made the turning radius there as large as we could within the city right of way. So it's probably a little bit broader than it was in the last plan because. Um, Is this what you want? No, yeah. no, no, keep going. Yeah, keep going. It's the colored, it's the colored switch. Oh, it's easier to see them. 
Okay. Oh. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I'm not talking about that. You're talking about the, the public the parking lot. lot. Yeah, the, pu the parking oh, oh, lot. Yeah. I'm sorry, on the other side of the street. Yeah. Oh, we made that one narrower because it was apparently we, we drew it the first time to match what exists there now, and that was two feet wider than the standard, so we narrowed it. Narrowed, so it's at 24 feet, which yes. is okay. Yes. And it's uh, directly across the. That's right here. Right. So it's across the, the proposed entrance. Right. Yeah, that, that was 26 feet wide in the survey, but we're going to narrow it. When we redo it, we, we put the curtain back in. <coughs> and Hall Street gets closed. And this gets yeah. closed. Yeah. Okay. How would you describe the typical resident of this facility? Carefully. <laughs> Um, I could give you, I'm going to give you a profile, you're not supposed to profile people, but uh, this is true across the whole United States for independent living. The average age is, uh, when someone moves in, 78 to 80 average, which means half or below that line, half or above. 80% uh, are single, predominantly single women, a few widowed men. Uh, only 15 to 20 percent couples, and that's not an accident. Um, when couples have one another, they live in a different way together. They have more social structure. They divide up the chores and you know, all kinds of dynamics. And so, we'll wait. <coughs> and and uh, this has a lot more value to people that aren't in that circumstance any longer. Um, many of us, a good percentage, maybe 15, 20 percent or more, have given up driving just because it's really expensive and they don't see you well at night and glare or something like that. But when you move people into an environment like this where they can walk to so many things within two or three blocks, uh, we have historically always provided a half of a car per unit parking ratio. And that includes the one or two staff that are around as well. And that has worked really well. If it didn't, we'd change it pretty quick. Because <coughs> if you can't satisfy somebody about their method of taking care of themselves and getting out when they need to, you aren't going to sell the unit, and that's not a good thing. So we also have a van, and that van uh, goes to scheduled things that are on calendar. And so equal watching, baseball, all kinds of things happen in the grocery store twice a week. That further reduces even some of the cars on the lot getting used because why use their gas if we're going to pick them up the front door and drop them off at the door. Um, these are people who do not need to live here. I mean, medically, physically, they don't need to be here. They could stay in their house. They just don't want to any longer for different reasons. Um, it's a little easier. There's somebody to take care of a lot of stuff. There's a small staff. And our staff is smaller than the competition that some of you may have visited or seen because we have all those businesses out there that are staffing some of our activities and services for us. They're already there. So we're not going to duplicate that inside of the building. Um, they don't drive often. They don't drive at rush hour. Uh, they will go out there if they still have friends. They go do things off of this campus. And then we do activities on the campus even though the downtown business district is full of stuff to do all week. Some of them will cook, some won't. The restaurant that we planned for the church, somebody said, well, do you really have to do a restaurant? Uh, meals are, and dining is kind of the social glue that holds everybody together. It's more than just a meal. People going down there to go to dinner to tell stories and lies and whatever they do together uh, every night at dinner. And uh, so food, all day long, food is a big deal actually in some form or another. So, you know, the restaurant would be up in here, there'd be outdoor dining space there for the public. Our residents would go in, the ones that choose to eat there, they don't, they're not forced to, it's not mandatory, like it's included in most other places, you get it whether you want it or not. This is by choice. So if they don't want to eat there, they can walk into town and eat somewhere else for a change of base, go with their relatives and do that, shop, that kind of thing. Colder weather, and as they get older, they'll eat more and more in the restaurant and get there inside. Visitations from family members will go up. If mom was just at the house by herself, she 
may not see the children, the grandchildren as often. When uh, she's downtown and you can walk across the street to the roost or walk over to Thorns to get some candy, you know, grandchildren and daughters and sons will go visit more, which is a positive benefit for the community as well as the resident. Yeah, by having a public restroom, we do see sons, daughters, friends, relatives, younger people eating with their older relative way more frequently than you see in the average community. Some of those community dining rooms, even though they're attractively done, you feel pretty out of place. Uh, you're one out of a hundred people sitting in the room, probably in somebody's chair, and they're upset with you. Um, our residents will park back here, and they'll be assigned spaces by number. This lot is really intended for everybody else, relatives, visitors, uh, restaurant or retail patrons. So you do not provide personal services, homemaking, personal care? Well, personal care, when you start personal care, uh, what we do do is we allow them, and they do this through their families themselves, not through us the contract, but home health care is a very useful tool here because we have people that stay till 90, 93. Or some of them you wouldn't believe they were that age. But at some point, some things could begin to happen where they don't want to leave, they've made friends here, very tied into everything, don't want to go to another care level somewhere. So for certain kinds of things, you can bring home health care in for an hour or two, share it with some other people. Unlike in their homes where nobody's watching them, we are watching them. If they don't stay two hours and they don't do what they're supposed to do, that resident people hear about it. <laughs> but that home health care tool is wonderful. We had a guy named Howard Hughes that lived in our building for a whole year longer than he could have, had a oxygen bottle. And he and his caregiver, the restaurant, walked a meal down to his apartment for a whole year for the two of them to eat there so they could stay longer and then work fine. Hospice services? Well, they can get hospice is, is kind of contracted under specific circumstances. It could happen here. But uh, most of the time, well, frequently, it, I, would, I don't know. I would say it's happened occasionally, but most of the time, some reason, off-site somewhere. Housekeeping, Housekeeping. every week, or vacuuming, mopping, housekeeping chores take place. We, get, we provide that in the uh, service. One very minor question, but on the show a couple different bike rack details. Do you know which one you've settled in on? Or I'm trying to not be forced into that decision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my question back would be: If there's any of those three that you hate or don't like or find unacceptable, let's take them off the list. But until we had the chance to get the rest of our team assembled and really design, we haven't designed the inside of the building at all. And, uh, there will be certain conditions. We're putting uh, some bike racks back here. We're putting some here near our front door. We're putting some here in the public plaza. Mm -hmm. And the specifics of exactly how they're going to fit, the bikes are going to attach, and like to leave a little room there. But if they want to, we'll one. And, uh, I'll take you up on that offer. <laughs> and um, I'll mix the falconer and the hunt code. Those types of racks, they're, okay. they're referred to as dish draining racks. Yep. And they kind of tend to twerk. Um, a wheel and a frame. Okay. Um, You're a bike yeah. rider. Yes. <laughs> what was the second one? The you, show, you show the falconer and the hunt code. They're both that dish drain style. Okay. Got it. Other questions? I want a quick question. Can you just confirm if that entryway where you expect the trash truck to come is the same where delivery would come for the retail space in the restaurant? Are you expecting right here? Are you, you're expecting that to be for the daily deliveries for the restaurants and for that's our yes, intention. That's and uh, on this side of the, the, we see the go back to that plan, Mike. Well, this would be the drive, but uh, go back to the plan a second because. The, Look at where the kitchen is going to likely be. I asked this because I, I like the plaza concept, but my concern living downtown and seeing the deliveries every single day is that that plaza will just become a thoroughfare of hand carts and trucks and, you know, that being 
a little different from people. Well, we have you know we have a restaurant that's uh, called the Big Sky Cafe that's in um, our building at home. It was the first one we did, and it's about the exact same size as what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. The kitchen for this uh, restaurant, I think, is going to be in this general area back here because this is not a good public exposure site. People are going to want to come in that door. Mm -hmm. There's a side door there. This is where all the outdoor dining <coughs> stuff is. Parking is here, so coming across, and you can enter where that tower is as well. And there may actually end up being an entrance there that could get you through to the restaurant, even a good handicap one there, because there's only a foot difference in grade right where my dot is there and that finished floor, whereas up here, there are two or three steps there. So we have to come all the way around to there to get a good um, you know, ramp in. So with the kitchen here, what we've done is we set up on the ground floor of the new building, uh, the trash area and service area is right there. Inside of that space is a, is a shop and a holding area for deliveries mm -hmm. so that we can let these guys during their early and late hours uh, come across, go through the, the service hallway here to that loading and delivery area. And that's just how we're going to make them do it in certain mm -hmm. kinds of carts. And it will be in off hours, not when functions are happening out there on the plaza or our residents are out on their plaza. Um, I think uh, we've done that before. It's not something you have to, you just walk away from and don't police because some busboy is going to break the rules, but we have on-site management and we'll watch them and keep it under control. But I think early on when we talked to the neighbors, it was probably stated and clear to all of us that you know, sticking the trash truck or the delivery stuff over you know, along this side of the property somewhere was not a great thing with smells and noises and things at odd hours, but I don't think we're going to bother the post office too much right there. Other questions from the board? Oh, I was just curious about the uh, number of staff uh, parking and where they parked. Well, they're part of our parking ratio, but we also can allow, if we had an extra staff person on a certain day, they would go over here. This will all be completely assigned to residents. You don't park in a resident space or you hear about it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not going to happen, but this lot, we could. Staff typically, on a, in our buildings, typically we have a building manager there during the day, a housekeeper who's providing one hour of housekeeping improvement at, um, and uh, a grounds person. Uh, sometimes those people aren't full time, however, it might be four days, three to four days. And then uh, every other day, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, there'll be an activities director there. She's the one who creates the, the trip stuff and the on site activity calendar for the month with the residents. And then all those people go home around four. And what we call our night manager comes on one person and they're in the building until uh, they go home and they lock up and they crash up and do some other things. I just had one comment about the driveway, uh, the, the four parking spaces in the um, two-way driveway. Um, the zoning doesn't allow parking within five feet of the front of the lot line, so I there doesn't look car. like <laughs> that would be. It just went away. Okay, good. <coughs> so, well, we were already in that way, so. And it's for that purpose that you were describing. We were thinking it's not, exactly it's not a safe location. One other comment on lighting: we typically will ask for a lighting as built. Plan so make sure that it's consistent with your plans. So that's right. That's something. Yeah. Full on. Any yeah. questions on the board? Yeah. Comments from the public on this slide? I, yeah, I'm Mark Corbo, uh, attorney for Marie Wechter. Um, so, after having met with Dave and the crew tonight earlier, um, I would say I'm reasonably optimistic that we'll work out something. I do believe that, you know, the concerns have been met. We have essentially five concerns. 
um, access during construction um, to the house and to parking I and mean, access for those cars or little visitors I mean um, and tenants um, aesthetics not losing uh, any of the lawn area. Privacy, which would be, uh, which I think we've talked about taking care of in some version of knee wall, fence, um, possible landscaping, but most likely fence, knee wall combination. Um, I do, Dave said he committed to um, working with us and trying to you know, make that work out. I think that is very likely we'll be able to do that given the concerns. Um, and the only other real concern, the fifth one would be, uh, I think I just said, the, uh, the fifth one would be uh, construction staging. Uh, we don't want any construction vehicles staged on Phillips in front of them in that section. Um, and, you know, access during the construction, I think the discussion was it might be done part of the road at a time so that there's always access to the doors and the parking. Um, and as I said, privacy and buffer landscaping. So those are the five areas that I believe from our conversation that it's very likely that uh, that will be worked out as long as, you know, something is done on all of those that is satisfactory, I think will be generally in favor of things. Okay. Can I just clarify, did you say construction staging on Phillips Place at on, Pano, yeah, or the driveway? The driveway itself, on, uh, off of Phillips. Mm -hmm. uh, the driveway itself, off Phillips. And Phillips itself. I think the plan is to have the construction staging be in that parking lot on the front, from what I understand. Uh, that's later going to be for the like, parking and the rest of the um, And that will be, you know, adequate for that. It's just not to have, you know, bulldozers, backhoes, you know, uh, drywall trucks coming and parking on that section during. I mean, some of the earlier plans caused a little concern that <coughs> there was going to be a strengthened pad on the front <coughs> section. And that really wouldn't be acceptable because you know, you've got to live there and not have stuff. And oh, I, I think the concern. Now I know what you were looking at. I didn't know what you were talking about with that. You know what that stuff was? That was something the civil engineer put on there, grass blocked to absorb water. If, no. I, if I can just remind both so, that the conversation is with us, not yeah, with you. No, I just, <laughs> I think we, we did have a good conversation earlier. And then, as long as, again, the, the other concern is not losing any of the lawn area. but. I think that's, you don't want to still lose it. You know, I think there can be a win-win there where it's a nice design for Marie and for the people who come and use the facility. You know, they seem committed to it, so. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I had a question about the maintenance in the uh, building. You mentioned if the number you, of- Wait, if you could come out and uh, tell us who you are and address your question to us. Uh, Fred Simnock, Ward, Ward 3. I live on 23 Pomeroy Terrace, which is not too far behind and you mentioned people working in the building and I was wondering about maintenance for example blown fuses light bulbs computer network clogged toilets who takes care of all that would you like to respond if I can sure uh, well two or three people the building manager on some of those items that you mentioned the what I described as the yard guy um, he's not a plumber. He's not a licensed electrician. Um, so, but usually the hiring that we do there is somebody that's capable of fixing a, a toilet that's running and little other things, changing batteries and like. So a lot of interior and almost all exterior keeping up of grounds and cleaning off windows and buildings that would have to there first, and then we go to outside contractors after that. Yes, ma'am. Can I just speak from back here? Sure. If you just say your name. Uh, Becky Shannon, 2 Pomeroy Terrace. So you mentioned the few people that would be in the building, but you didn't mention the people that would be working in the kitchen and uh, the waiters and waitresses' cars and the customers' cars. Is there, um, how is that parking going to be accommodated? Uh, go back to the that's what the, the parking lot on Phillips is intended for. Oh, okay. uh, 
There are 33 spots total between okay. these and what's in the back for residents <coughs> and, and a visitor or two. And then this one, we, we took two spaces off of it to get the rain garden in there. Um, It was 44, I think, and that was 42, but that lot is intended for all visitors and all other miscellaneous people. Our, our goal, and I think most of, almost all the time we'll hit it, there could be something event-wise that happens here that wouldn't, but um, we, we don't want to take up street parking. I think Phillips Street is clogged enough as it is, and finding parking places even for the people who live there is a challenge, so we don't want to if there's some kind of public function there that the neighborhood's coming to, it's probably it's possible we would overflow our lot some night and have to make arrangements and get somebody parked somewhere else. But we hope almost all the time we're not making it worse than it is. Other question, yes. My name is uh, Mike Stoddard, and I live right next to the, uh, the church. The first meeting that we had, there was discussion on where the cut was going to be for that parking lot, whether it was going to be on Phillips Place or off of Holly Street. And I got the impression from that <clears throat> first meeting that the majority of people thought that it should go off of Holly rather than Phillips, because as the board should know, that's a uh, truck escape route for one thing. And we bear the brunt of all the people who work in Northampton who park on our street for free. And those tenants that live in downtown Northampton, they park on our street for free and leave their cars there for weeks at a time. To the point where I come home from work in the afternoon and I can't park anywhere near my house. I have to actually sneak into their parking lot across the street until anytime like 7, 30, 8 o'clock, which I have to go out of the house again and get my car and so I don't want to leave it in their lot overnight. And then I, a space is freed up fairly close to the house. And now you're talking about having this be the main entrance and people coming and visiting and everything else. I think that Phillips Place bears enough traffic without inviting another 30 spaces of people to come up Phillips Place. I mean, that should be a walkway across to the complex. I can see them driving up Phillips and turning left to go into the the development to drop their grandmother, uh, grandfather, whoever, whatever relative happens to live there. But then go back, you know, come back out, however, go down the street and then come in off of Holly Street and then put a nice walkway across um, across Phillips so that they can go over there. And that way there, when the cars are leaving at night, particularly when they're leaving at night, they're shining those lights at a dead space across the street because you got the the um, arts building that sits right there and it's a it's a parking lot across the street it isn't you're not coming out and turning I mean if a cars were to come out and turn left every time they turn left the lights are going to go flashing across the house I, I just I just think that we bear enough burden with traffic on that tiny little street week after week after week without um, inviting more and I think it would be a better fit if that were a walkway, you know, let them park there. That's that's great, but it should be a walkway across. I, I would think. Put the curb cut on Holly Street and yes. not on Phillips Place, because I can tell you that the trucks come through there at all hours, all hours. They get they get confused by their GPSs going to the Coke plant, which the city doesn't seem too concerned about signage and that. They've got a little sign that's probably a eight by ten sign that you can't even see coming off the highway that all they need is a big big signage there that would tell them to go straight but the GPS because of the way the address is set up it tells them to go left and then they go right by our home, you know, all the time. Carolyn, I thought there was some uh, traffic safety issues with the placement of the 
be within yeah. 50 feet of the Right, there are several two. traffic safety issues, which is why um, there, I mean, there are already existing two curb cuts in this lot, so one on the Holly Street and one on the Phillips Place, and there was public comment last time about, you know, from the neighborhood about this issue, The but um, accessing the parking lot, I mean, it's literally within 10 feet or so of that intersection. It's just a safe, uh, unsafe movement to be going in and out so close to the intersection as opposed to having all traffic um, come to that intersecting point at Phillips and Holly Street. So there are a number of actually um, requirements in the zoning that you can't have a curb cut within 50 feet of an intersection. Um, this but section, it also goes, the driveway is up in the CV section, and so anyone using that lot won't be going further down Phillips Place. They'll just be entering the lot and then going back out to the intersection. But there is an existing cut. No, they're closing, that's right. On, on the hall. Right. Yes, there is. Right. And right. By two existing, they're closing one. Right. right. Which is Are they required to close one? They're required to close one. The zoning doesn't allow more than one curb cut. Because of the thing, it's the property they have to abide by. Correct. Any any change requires um, coming up the code. Right. Can they force a left turn instead of allowing a right turn? Um. Well, it's narrow enough. I I mean, sorry. I don't know that that would work. Um, given the type of street it is. Um, I mean, I think that um, the way you would do it is to create, um, you know, a one way out, but it's not one, it's a two way, it's 24 foot wide driveway. So the only way to do that is to sort of, you have to make a physical, you know, forcing the cars to move in one direction. And I don't know how you do that on um, an what opening that. Yeah. You can't, it is not enforceable. It, do, it doesn't make sense. You're setting someone up for thinking, I mean, it's a feel good thing to have a sign that says no left turn because there's no way that it can be enforced. Are, are there designs to the cross from the, from the parking lot to Phillips? Is there a crosswalk or a raised table or a, something to identify that intersection for pedestrians or whatever? To uh, slow traffic or to a visual prompt or physical prompt? Well, we haven't asked for something like that. The thought has crossed our minds, but our assumption, point of wonder myself, um, we've created a little walkway right here to, the, to connect to the sidewalk. Our hope was to encourage these people to come down here and cross at that point. Now, I'm guessing like Carolyn said, some people aren't going to pay attention to that idea, and they may cut across and walk down there. But most of this lot is going to be traffic going right there and right there. Once they park here, pedestrian-wise traffic, I think crossing right here is, and then we also have access there where it ramps up <coughs> to the plaza level a little bit <coughs> so they can get to this outdoor dining and the retail. I, I do think... Um, that when you look at the destination and where these people are going to like to come from and where they believe in the and the traffic study studied this for us and, and they kind of came to their own conclusion about it but I think most of this restaurant or retail traffic is going to be coming that direction and I think they're going to come in and park and they're probably going to go out the way they came we could put a, a don't turn right please don't go through the neighborhood sign up but you know that might do a little bit and might do nothing. From a standpoint of the function for our project, whether it's here or there, doesn't matter a whole bunch. Uh, the rain garden goes away completely, probably if we move it back to Holly because there's no point in trying to collect water in that little corner and that little corner. <laughs> so, What about move the um, exit from the parking lot 10 feet further from the left? Oh. The left? Uh, you mean move it down into here somewhere? Yeah, maybe. just a little uh, bit so lights, the car lights wouldn't shine under the house. Great idea. You know, that's just like that Melanie Griffin movie where the little kid says, why don't they just let the air out of the tires of the truck to get it unstuck from the tunnel? <laughs> so if, if 
if you just if you just stated that all the traffic for the restaurant and the and the development are becoming coming down Holly, it would be easier if they came down Holly and turned it into the parking lot. Now they've got to come down and they've got to turn left to go up Phillips and then right to go into the parking space. If you were to come out on the curb cut on Holly Street, you exit where there's no parking allowed on either side. When you come out of that curb cut on Phillips Place, there's parking on both sides of the street. There it's across the street and it's on either side of that curb cut. And, and I understand and your logic makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. It's just that that would be something that would be against the zoning ordinance. Well, well I, I didn't get that part of it. You're only allowed two curb cuts? No. Yes. Well, no, you're allowed one curb cut. There's two. So one has to go away. The one on Holly Street is within 50 feet, among other things, but it's within 50 feet of the intersection, which is not allowed. The one on Holly, and the one on Phillips is not within 50 not, feet? No, not in this no, it's a group, no. There's only there's on there's no on street parking on this um, on the southerly side of the parking lot, but again it's sort of actually on street parking goes to the only reason why you have a, um, a raised intersection or a crosswalk is to slow traffic. On street parking does the same thing, and we don't uh, well, the city's policy is not to allow a mid block crossing anyway because it's not safe at all. So we do want people to walk to that intersection and cross anyway, but I think the fact that you have on-street parking I'll, uh, acts as a similar, you know, a traffic right. home. But they could, if, if allowable, they could move the entrance as far as long as west still as allowable. Feet. Yes, as okay. long as it were still 50 feet. Wouldn't you want it, though, physically to, to be opposite the entrance? Doesn't. Um, yeah, that one probably doesn't matter so much because it's one way in. Yeah. And also, if it were just moved like 10 feet, it would still be close to the uh, sidewalk, yeah, to the drive one way. Makes, right, yeah, the one way makes that. The, the driveway, yeah, the other one, yeah, it's on not. The, the other one is two ways. Yeah. That one's one way. Yeah. Any other public comment? Yes, yes this is, I'm Patty Stoddard, um, and I live at 22 Phillips Place. And um, I have to agree with my husband that I'm a little troubled by where the entrance to the parking lot is um, for all the reasons that he said, but also um, for the fact that um, that, um, that we, we are probably the most impacted um, home um, by this. And as people are coming in and out, even if it's moved down a little bit, and that would be a better solution than none. I would prefer to have it from, uh, from Holly, but if it can't, that, you know, I understand that. But um, but I, I guess I have two questions. One is that there's already an existing um, curb cut there now. Is that, um, that can't be grandfathered or whatever because it's already existing. And number two, um, uh, I feel like, you know, we're, we're gonna be, we, we sit out a lot on our front porch and I know this is probably just really referring to us, but there's people, I mean, people are gonna be coming into our street and then constantly going in and out of the parking lot and then coming out and going down Phillips and then in. And, you know, we, we've been told that that parking lot's gonna be for the restaurant and also <coughs> for the workers. So people are gonna be coming out all, all times of the day and night, I would think, if they're visiting the restaurant. I mean, I, I've looked at other parking lots, such as the one next to Spletos or any of the other restaurants in town, and people are coming in and out of them when they're, when they're done with their meal. And I just feel like it's really going to interfere with our um, our quality um, of living in our home. Um, as I said, we sit on the front porch all the time, and the peacefulness of it, without a lot of cars coming back and forth. And I I think it's it's bad enough that all those people are allowed to park on a street and we can't even park there. But this is just going to add insult to injury from my perspective. And I just hope that the board will um, will consider that when we're talking about when we're looking at alternatives. It can be grandfathered, right, because of its uh, major site. Uh, right, any change um, requires you to come to compliance. I'm oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Any change it's forces it to come into compliance with current zoning. But it's the same. We're not changing it. Well, the change. use is changing. It's not, it's not the, the, the overall the project right. change is a significant What's project. What's the change in the use of the parking lot? <coughs> the project itself. So it's, it's, a it's all one piece of property considered. Marie Wechter, and I do want to talk about the same issue. I think I'm going to put it in a slightly different way. 
last time we came, you guys gave them a special dispensation <coughs> to change the use of the residential neighbor, the, the part of the bottom end of that parking lot was residential, zone residential. You gave them permission to make it all one parking lot and change that use. Well, that doesn't change the fact that it still borders on a residential neighborhood and there has to be some consideration to mitigate the added traffic. We've are, we're going to have 62 new residents and their traffic going in here and then coming out by my house. But um, I think this is unfair to your planning in that Phillips Place becomes the travel lane for this new for all these new businesses which are in the business district on Holly and on this end. But you're putting all of the impact of it on the residential neighborhood which abuts it. And there has to be some consideration for the residential neighbor of the neighborhood that you're pop that this is you know, we all want to see progress, we want to see this happen, but you have to have some consideration for the nature of the neighborhood. Um, I just want to confirm that, the, so about the, the parking space widths are eight and a half feet wide minimally. So that's going to be about five parking spaces. It gets you to 50 feet. It's going to be a little bit less than that um, because there's that green space at the corner. Well, so those are handicapped, so they're a little wide. No, 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 I'm starting from Holly right. Street. So if you start, there's a, that One, green two, three, um, buffer four, in the corner. Five, six, I mean, you'd be right about there, I guess. Or a little bit, you could potentially be a tiny bit um, west Left. because you've got the green, you've got oh, okay, you've 10 got, feet yeah, of buffer yeah. there. Yeah, maybe So right potentially, here. so there, it looks like there is room to slide the driveway location down and still meet the 50 foot offset from Yeah. Well, I think what it, it uh, uh, would address what Marie's talking about, um, the, if I was going to think about something to protect the porch uh, beer uh, location here, it would be to consider maybe a hedge along this because these cars, regardless of where we put it here or here, that if somebody gets in that car and turns the headlights on, they're going to shine across the street. These aren't going to bother anybody, but those might. So maybe a uh, on the, end, on the end there is, but not here, I don't think. Oh, over in front of, oh, front of there. Oh. 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 So, yeah, your house is actually elevated and you have a head, but, but still, the lights are only about that far off the ground. It wouldn't be real difficult there to do something. But I think moving this down means that the cars are making their turns to make their exit and go out. Uh, they'd be, headlights would be hitting the side of the church. Yeah, I think it's not a it's not a lot about the the lights. It's just a little little piece the of the puzzle. But, all right, the, the biggest thing is the, uh, the increase in, increase in traffic. I have a question yes. about the fifty feet. Um, so, well, we were just looking, in, and I think Helen was saying that um, where the fifty feet you would come in so many. Feet. <coughs> it appears to me where people were pointing to. Um, that there's that much room at, if you go to the far end of the Holly Street end of the parking lot. Is that yeah. another option? Well, you, you have a drive well, out here. Yeah. You have the what? You, you lose a lot of parking spaces if you got more than 50 feet away from that Oh, you have to have them on both sides, you're okay. saying. Oh, I understand. The landscaping plan also shows uh, boxwood along that. Um, Good. So, uh, <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm Harold Holmes. Uh, I live at 28 Phillips Place. I'd like to uh, support Marie and, and my, my neighbors. Uh, you know, this is a great positive development, and our issue isn't with the developers because they didn't decide where that parking lot would exit. And you have to trust us because we all live in the neighborhood and we know about traffic. And we know that anybody who go exits from that parking space if they exit on phillips place 90 percent of that traffic is going to go east on phillips place in order to get to route 9 and to get to the highway that's just what they're going to do now we haven't asked for anything from the planning board really i mean the developers have been very accommodating and we've heard two reasons for why this this curb cut has to be on why we have to close the Holly Street and 
uh, and just have the Phillips place thing. The first reason was for storm water, okay? That was the first reason that was given by the planning board in these various hearings. Fine, I understand that. Uh, we want to be good citizens about that, but we have voiced our concerns again and again. And it feels like the, the, you're saying that even though that curb cut is there, it has to be closed and it doesn't matter because we have these concerns. And I just, I feel like the, the, the planning board is not hearing us and is not being uh, responsive to our wishes. And this is not an issue with the developers, it is an issue with the planning board. And I'll just try to respond, and I'm yeah. sure that uh, Carol, Carolyn will correct me when I'm wrong. And, and I'll just uh, share with you that I've been in your place with the planning board, uh, on my own property, so I, I understand your frustration and, and that. But by the same token, we as the planning board do not have unfettered ability to make, a, make improvements or make conditions that would violate existing ordinances and <laughs> those kinds of things. We cannot, you know, our job is to interpret the project, make sure the project meets those requirements and try to enhance it as best we can when we, when we have the opportunity, tree plantings, you know, whatever it might be, lighting, bicycle, all those kinds of things. But we cannot in, in consciously approve something that would violate an existing zoning ordinance. Now there is, there are opportunities for relief for those kinds of things in another venue, uh, but it's not this thing. We don't have the authority that, 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 that I think you think that we do. There's, yes, there's, there's opportunities for relief. There's interpretations. Yes. And so forth, and I suppose that's a legal matter. Could be, I am not an attorney, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you that. Right. Yes, ma'am. My name is Jane Potter. I live at 42 Phillips Place, um, and I would like to echo my neighbor's sentiments and also offer my um, appreciation to the developers who I think have been incredibly responsive to, to the neighbors. Um, but I'd like to add one more thing. I, I, I worry that we sound as though we're all grumpy. We've you know, too much parking on our street, too many, too many trucks. Um, I'll add my story. We've had two people towed just the other day because I couldn't get out of my own driveway. And um, there's construction going on down the street now and trucks, you know. But I think the bigger picture is that we've got a business zone crashing up against a residential zone. And that's something that um, really needs to be considered, I think, not just from our perspective, but I worry about the safety of the people who are gonna come to you. You know, the trucks just zoop down the street. Um, there are little kids, there was a little kid playing in the street the other day when one of the trucks came flying. You know, something bad is gonna happen. And I think that unless we get our heads around the fact that this is a, a wonderful project and it's zoned for business, that's fine, that's really in a residential area. And there are little children, and there are grandchildren, and there, and there are things we have to consider before something really terrible happens. And I hope you will pay attention to that. Thank you. Uh, Alan. I, <coughs> I certainly wouldn't question any of the neighbors' description of the traffic in the neighborhood, but I don't understand. If I were exiting that parking lot, and I could turn left and then 50 feet, there'd be a, a, a clear way of getting out on the Ollie. Why would I turn right and go down the narrow yeah. congestion? You missed the light. Crowded. You missed the light. The street the is that. It's just hard it's just for me to believe that somebody no. would go down do. and narrow it happens every day by the hours. They will 28 Phillips Place. We have people who drive down our street now to avoid the light at that intersection. Yeah, it's and a that's it, you know, we, we avoid the light ourselves. We we down down if, if we could just, if we could just, you know, one time. Thing. Yes, ma'am. Well, I just want to. I know that this this is related. If you're changing traffic patterns by had because people are going to turn right and go down Phillips Place to get to Route Nine because that is a, an implied traffic that it relieves the traffic from uh, Pleasant Street. They go down to Holyoke Street and then around. And it's already a big problem. The, the traffic stuff you guys had said the average speed was 14 miles an hour. That's just not true. It's it's just it's just not true. Um, and and I think that you have an opportunity as our planning board to say, okay, this development creates added burden. And if we put it here, we're going to create even more traffic down this residential street. So it's your it's almost your job to say, how do we mitigate this? 
and how do we balance the needs of the residents and development? Because I think as, as a neighborhood, we're all very positive, but we really do want some help. We don't want to see our ability to live in a residential neighborhood change because the traffic becomes the major traffic pattern. Yes, sir. I'm Mike Kirby, 134 North Street. I'm kind of confused here because I thought that the community organization advocated a change to have the exit onto Phillips Place. And, and I thought that the original plan showed the curb cut on Holland. There's an existing curb cut on the Holland. The existing curb cut. The original plan showed keeping the Holly Street curb cut. And I think that's where it ran up against zoning ordinances and, and traffic safety ordinances that, that we could not remain given that they were doing the project. So as soon as they, if they did nothing with the property, then that could have stayed. But as soon as you begin the project, you've got to bring it up to existing code. And the existing code would be, would not allow for that curb cut. Well, that's enough to turn this over. You all must know that this is the first time I've ever done this, so this is good. <laughs> so as, as that, I, I think I understand you now, so as that sits right now, it's legal, but once it's changed or becomes part of their development, then all of a sudden you got to back it up to the 50 feet. You've got to bring it up to the section. Just like, you know, with a home or anything, right. you bring it up to yep. It's kind of like when you add to a building and you have to do, do it as handicapped right. now. Yeah. Or sprinkle it. Or, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, same, thing. same thing. So how, what, where, at what point would it be 50 feet away from the other side? What's the, what's the width of the that's the property at Holly Street. Eight feet per yeah, yeah, space. It was like no, looking you at Holly Street. You mean using Holly Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so where would the driveway, okay. is it possible to have yeah. it be 50 feet? Yeah, it would be good to see where that is. That would be helpful. You mean you keep it on Holly Street? Yes. Yeah. You could do yeah. that, but you'd lose an entire row of parts. Right. No, well, that's just the whole thing. Couldn't parking go this way if we moved further back? Could it go linear instead of like parallel parking type instead of pulling it? Push it. Push it. I think it could be done to push the driveway. You might lose one parking. You're yeah. losing it. You might lose two. Yeah. 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 Is there, I don't know what's below it. What's further south? I don't know. It's probably not a street. I mean, you so yeah you may you may have to so if I can clarify with the developer if I could ask a question um, it would seem that it would be possible to put it on Holly if you if we put it towards the corner and brought it in that way given your description of the use of this lot it would seem to me and I'm just a volunteer um, <laughs> that um, that given the use I mean I don't get the impression that you expect every space in that lot to be filled every day nine to five ten whatever that it's it's there for whoever needs it well, and as many people as possible as we keep off the street. But right. if we start losing one, two, three spaces, where do you think they're going to go? If they well, but I, what, what I hear, <laughs> what I hear the public saying is I, I understand. that you know they're willing to trade one problem for another. That this is the bigger of the two problems. Well, that they already have a full street. Decrease the value. That this, you know, that 
two of them, you know, they're not going to park on the street because they're already filled, so there's no place for them to park. Those two or three cars are going to be gone. Well, and also, as Dan points out, they'll pick up two spots right. in the middle from sure. Because so closing the, the yeah. closing yes. on the right. Yes. Now, the only thing I would add, uh, getting out my little architecture hat for two seconds, I know when I lay that out, it's physically possible to take that dry vial and bend it, bend it mm -hmm. away from the corner enough to get the edge of the curb cut to be deep in the corner. That's possible. I'm not sure how the flow of the car is turning left and right and then out of that <coughs> bended uh, access. You know, cars stack in the parking lot when they're leaving and sometimes when they're coming. It's going to be a little bit bizarre. It, it'll work on paper and, and only lose maybe two or three and then gain those two or three back over on the other uh, curb cut. Because we'll get probably three spaces over there. I'm sure you will. That would be Karen. so much better yeah. for us. Can we, can we make a, a, a qualification for the applicant to make a good faith effort to put the curb cut on College Street uh, pending DPW review and emergency access and so forth so everybody signs off on it? I mean, if they do it and then the fire chief says, I think <coughs> in there or something, nice try, but it's not going to work. Um, and then plan B would to be moved to Phillips entrance down, you know, as close as we can. No, I mean, you're going to have to decide. So you could put a permit condition, and then you're working out the details. If it doesn't work, I mean, you could make that public statement that then they'll come back to you for okay. an amendment to put it back, and then we can post the notice okay. that the change yep, right. is being requested. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to make the decision yes. one way or the okay. other. Okay. All right. And I had a question, uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone mentioned, and I'm sorry, I'm not recalling the earlier session, that there were storm <coughs> water falls where the, where, where the parking lot entrance, I, I don't know. Well, they did, as that. part of their stormwater approval, they um, sh are showing that they're capturing drainage Oh, there. okay, okay, I was thinking so there was something, a, okay. So they're going to have to do some recalculations okay. for that, um, okay. but that would be part of the amendment. Well, and by moving it that way, Maybe the whole thing doesn't go. It's going to be too small if you went right to the middle. But if you go to the left, maybe you will puddle over on the corner. Yeah. Well, but again, you're also gaining space on the curb right. around the other side. Yeah, yeah but you can't, do, you can't do a yeah. rain here. It's not the right condition. I, I just want to offer one more positive thought. In this traffic study that I read, it shows that there had only been one collision in that intersection. So in, in, in the Yeah, but it was three or four years, years ago. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? That's our big one. Okay. <laughs> I'll, yes, I'll make one. <laughs> and that is, my name is Fred Zimnock, Ward Street. I used to go up Phillips Street uh, at least twice a day for about 30 years. And at that time, the church was there. And that parking lot was used by the parishioners to, to park their cars. And occasionally what would happen, there's only one street light there that's just off the parking lot. And a number of times it would blow up. And as a result, that street in the winter was dark as all hell. I don't know how the older parishioners made it across an icy street into the church from that parking lot. So my only suggestion is make sure the street lighting is really adequate for that parking lot. It failed a number of times in the past, so good street lighting for that parking lot and people getting across from the parking lot to the facilities, of course. Um, not seeing any other hands. Um, it's not six o'clock. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna suggest that we leave it open yeah. if, if folks can understand that we're now gonna have our conversation and, and go from there. But in case we need to have any. So is there a lighting plan for that parking lot? Or not? Yes, there is. Could you. Um, I don't think. Have that just that or not? Yes. I don't think it would. Uh, <coughs> that, I don't think that would have much impact on it. So that doesn't really come yet. Uh, questions, comments from the board? Well, I think like so many other projects that are coming for us, we spend very little time actually talking about the project and most of the time talking about parking or traffic. Yeah. Um, and from before in May when we met 
the comments were almost entirely positive, except for parking and traffic, and the same uh, tonight. I think the applicant has, has made a very good faith effort to address the issues that did come up before. Um, and I think within the limited authority that we have, if we move the uh, entrance to the parking lot to Holly Street and address some of these other issues that came up, um, I think that would go a long way and as long as we could make it uh, go. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I agree. I, I think uh, as I shared, I mean, I think our, you know, our job is to make it the best project possible and, and I think some of the things we've talked about are we'll certainly, you know, we'll certainly do that. And then close the one on. Right, one on. Close. But yeah. I also think it's important for us to acknowledge and discuss that, you know, we're never just talking about the commercial versus residential. This is URC. This is the single most dense residential <coughs> district in the city of Northampton. So this is not designed to be a low density, you know, right. children playing in the streets because there's no traffic. And that's, you know, that's the center of town isn't going anywhere. And so there's right. always going to be these houses that live adjacent to downtown. This is where, you know, that's where it is. And so I think they have done a, a, a nice job of yeah. that. The other thing. I know we talk about traffic and parking and we've brought up the workers. This again is another opportunity to have downtown jobs for people who live downtown. Yeah. Yeah. And I live and work downtown, people who I employ and are employed next door. There's more and more people who are going to be working in these kinds of jobs who can live downtown because we've got more affordable housing and they're walking and everything. So, so I think that's important. Anyone else? I think it's great. Um, we should approve it. Uh, I love the project. Um, so much to it, you know, the, the, uh, keeping the church um, in a downtown sort of. Uh, it really meets so many sustainable goals. I'm really torn, you know, about about asking the developer to, to move that entrance. I completely hear your frustrations. I do, um, but if, if when they're within their right, uh, being in um, this this zone to to, to have. Know, cars turn onto Phillips and immediately into the parking lot. I don't know. I'm torn. Dan? I'm actually good with where we are right now. I think having, you know, it may not pan out, but if it does pan out, it'll, I think it'll pan out well, but it has to pan out well, otherwise it won't. So. <laughs> okay. um, then, uh, if someone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I do want to get a clarification then on, on the direction. Is the project um, then contingent on us being successful in getting that job done? Or is it that we're re requested to work with the neighbors to go try to get it done? There's a difference. No, no. We have to make it contingent. And we, we would have to make it contingent. And, and if it was proven not, if you felt it was proven not to be possible, then you'd have to ask for an amendment and come back and we'd have this conversation again. And it's not, a, it's not working out with the neighbors. It's making sure right. that yeah, you know, right. your amendment yeah. to the stormwater is fine and that you're, um, you're, you're showing safe maneuverability yeah. in and out of the driveway. Not that we don't care about the neighbors. So, so it would have to be. It would have to be. Say that because I do. <laughs> yes. However, that's starting to stretch us out uh, a long ways. We have been at this for a very long time as it is, and uh, I, I think another conditional contingency that is an unknown decision. The part of another. I don't know what what board does that. Can't hear you. Uh, no. What board or how do you get that approval done? You change legislation or what? I'm not sure. I think you're. Yeah. To get the if, if, if we <laughs> no, if if we uh, put that in, that that's where it would be, and then you become convinced it's not possible, then you would come back to us. Yeah, I understand. But who do I go to to get it done? You, you, you do do, it. There's nothing. There's no one you have to go to. The city council. Right. Yeah, right. but there's no. <laughs> But yeah, there's no one you have to go to to get it done. Nothing right. has to change. It's allowable. Redrawn. Right. Yeah. Redrawn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The ordinance. Redrawn. 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 So if we if we're 50 feet away, there's no approval required. Anyway, right. do you have to come back here also then? Another one of these? No. So so let's say the board um, grants the permit with you know a whole bunch of conditions. One of them is move to move the curb cut to Holly Street so that it meets the 50 foot offset from the intersection. 
and you um, design so that what that's going to do is you're just you're going to have to make some tweaks in your stormwater calculations and submit that to DPW and show that you're still meeting the standards and then um, for the most part they're going to be looking at the safe access from the street into the parking lot so um, it's just a you know just be a staff review they're going to have to grant anytime you're making new cuts into a street they're going to have to grant a curb cut permit I think if you can make, I mean, so if they're DPW, fine with DPW your cut. Did you determine that safety question then? That yes. Question? No, okay. Right. But so then it would be, a st it's a staff level review. It's not, a, it's not another permit. It's just a review. And if um, DPW does not feel it's safe and they won't grant the curb cut there, then what that means is you come back to the planning board to request an amendment of just that one piece. Um, that trip that required you to move the curb yeah. cut. But, uh, but but where my concern is, we are. It's very important for this project in its entirety to get moving on something besides zoning. Mm -hmm. We we need to begin marketing the building and moving through a whole variety of other steps that are absolutely essential in order for this to become built. Now we just were granted a stormwater permit. Is that what happens to that? That's what I'm saying. You just need to um, submit a you modification. Come later, later. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, if it's not, if, if essentially it's it's being approved, subject to the fact that we successfully redraw it, redesign it, and get a staff approval of it, uh, that's probably fine because we've got time to do those kinds of things. As long as we're not still in a limbo yeah. about no. whether this project is an appropriate project on this piece of land. That's that's right. No, I think, I think, yeah, I think as Mark pointed out, I mean, I think we're way beyond that. It's, you know, okay. we're working on the details here. All right, I'm good. Uh, I would like to ask one other question. So we're going to make best effort to move the entrance from where it is now on Phillips Place to outside of 50 feet from the curb, from the corner of Hawley and Phillips. That's option one. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Well, well, but when it's presented, that would be the only option. option. Oh. Okay. And, and also, it's not just make a good faith effort. The permit will require it. Right. Right. And then, if for some reason you believe it's not possible, then you bring it back for adjustment. I also heard discussion today about moving the curb cut on Phillips Place because no, even I'm going to get booed. But even though we move that curb cut. Uh, close Phillips and relocate Hawley to the southerly side of the property on the lot, there's no guarantee that people are not going to make a right than a right and go right back to Route 91 the way all the residents do it. So, so, so there's no guarantee that's going to happen. So could we request that we will work with our engineers and uh, the DPW to first move the Phillips entrance exit to Hawley and if DPW and developer do not agree that that meets the requirement, move the entrance westerly on Phillips so that it, it is 50 feet from the corner of the intersection. I think I'm going to say the same thing to you I said going the other way a little bit ago is that we're not allowed to do that. We, we don't have the ability to have that discretion. We, we are going to approve this with these conditions. If those conditions have to change, then we have to approve something different. We can't make it, oh, if we can't make it option A or option B. We have to approve just one. I think not with this type of um, condition. There are some things where, um, that are, have a less impact on the result. So I think given the type of discussion and decision, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a discretionary decision by staff about where the best location is. The board has to determine. So if you want to go with a condition that's on Holly Street, then they move forward in that vein. If it doesn't work, they can always come back. And everybody's heard here that it may not work. And then you might have to come back and show instead the driveway shifted down five spaces or what have you. But that won't prevent them in the meantime from marketing the project. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
Because they would already, they already have the decision. The decision right, right. is here. It's just a little tweaking of the driveway that they might have to <coughs> fix, but it's not going to open up everything else. It's okay, just right. the driveway. Move to close. I was going to say, I don't know if you want to go through some of the conditions in case you have questions of the applicant before you so, close the hearing. So that was my the, the conditions I have are um, to address the comments from the tree board um, regarding tree removal and tree protection. Uh, the bike racks have to be consistent with zoning. Uh, we need a lighting as built upon completion and prior to certificate of occupancy. Um, the hedge at the parking lot along Phillips, boxwoods were shown, so that's not a condition. No, that I don't think not. Okay. Uh, moving the parking lot entrance on to Holly Street. Uh, Do you want to, there was, um, Carlos suggested that there are two styles of bike rack not be selected or to eliminate those two. Well, I don't know if you want to call them. <coughs> Shouldn't it just be they need to be consistent with zoning? I thought they did. That was wrong. We don't have a we don't have we have a guidebook for bike racks. It doesn't say <coughs> yes or no. Um, so I think it should just be noted somewhere that about the two styles that are not appropriate. Okay. But I think you covered the other. <coughs> Um, and then I don't know if in the tree, the tree about the structural soils in the um, that was in the tree board. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Additional screen on the eastern section of no, the park. Park. It's, it's already, already it's already it's there. Already it's there. Already it's there. Yeah. Now, how about the repair to the retaining wall? Um, does that need to be a condition or? It depends on what you think. I mean, they're showing um, some amount of landscaping. You could leave it up to them about how they want to address that um, because you're approving the drive. Unless, you know, I think, um, unless you think it's an important element about the retaining wall itself, they might find another solution to, to treating that um, property boundary. So if you're fine with that, then I don't think you need a condition. of a 62-unit residential building with 9,000 square feet of ground floor commercial use and associated parking structure. Special permit for greater than five-foot front setback and special permit for more than one curb cut at 10 Holly Street for Hampton Map ID 32A-170, 171, and 197 with the conditions noted. Second. Second by pass. All in favor? Opposed? Um, so, been approved with those conditions. Uh, I just want to mention uh, that I understand it was a very uh, uh, heartfelt issue, but <coughs> I wish I had a dollar for every time it was mentioned. The developer really has been helpful, and so it really sounds like there has been a very good exchange, and we certainly appreciate that, and right. like to see that kind of uh, sentiment come into our community. So I applaud both sides for, for doing that. We will now have our 740. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Permit major site plan review, uh, redevelopment of the site for 12 de de residential du duplexes. It was cut off at 87 Pomeroy, uh, 87 Bridge Street, Pomeroy Terrace. Zoning is URC, and the adjacent uses are residential. If you'd like to make a presentation, should I have the screen blue? Oh, here, selected. Just click it. There it goes. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Rob Levesque from our Levesque Associates. I'm here to see you representing Wintergreen LLC. Can you hear me okay? Not louder. A little bit. I'm Rob Levesque from our Levesque Associates. I'm here this evening representing Wintergreen LLC. Uh, with us in the audience in the blue shirt is Matt Campanari. He is the project proponent. Also with us is Ziggy Force in the uh, red shirt. Project <coughs> Architect. Uh, our Levesque Associates is the uh, site consultant. We are civil engineers and landscape architects on the project. So we again are here for a site plan approval and a special permit application uh, before your planning board for the redevelopment of the properties, uh, property located at the corner of Bridge and Conroy Terrace. The subject property um, currently contains four buildings. There's one, uh, and we'll actually skip ahead for a second. This is the existing conditions plan. Right now, there's the existing multifamily on the corner. There's the former motel building. There's a garage on the southwest corner of the site. And there's a duplex building on Pomeroy Terrace. So those buildings are all existing now. There's also an existing curb cut off Bridge Street, which will be eliminated. Um, while I'm on the existing conditions plan, I'll go to the existing conditions and demo plan. You'll see that right up front here as uh, part of our proposed project. I mean, I'm only going to this because it's, uh, it's on the demo and the removal sheet, but there are two spruce trees that will need to be removed as part of our project. So going back to the site plan again. So what we're proposing to do is leave the existing building on the corner. 
um, revamp this and reuse this. This will be six proposed residential units, which is a reduction from the existing. There, um, the motel building will be removed. There will be two duplexes for a total of four units. Each of the du those duplexes will have a single car garage located on the back side of the units. They will also have front porches as the uh, coordinated with your planner. That was a, a key component of the architectural. Um, the over the back side of the access ways to each of these units or the driveways, there will be decks overhanging those, those driveways. And we're proposing, uh, again, to remove this building here. This is the, there's a duplex, again, on uh, Pomeroy. We'll be removing that, and that would be a new duplex in its place. That is shown down here. You can see them uh, below our screen here. We'll pull that up in a minute. Um, the access that was, that was currently here is going to be removed, so the access off the bridge is gone. The access off the Pomeroy will generally be in the same location as it is now. We've adjusted the location of this unit a little bit to accommodate parking. We're coming in with a 20-foot drive aisle, which is fairly narrow, but um, we're kind of a tight site. We understand you want as little impervious surface as possible. So we have 20 coming in and actually be neck down to 18 around this area here. We have permeable pavers proposed that we have uh, a total of, I think it's 12 parking spaces along this edge. Um, and then a few additional parking spaces here. This is a little area just to make sure that we can accommodate a turnaround from this unit and we can actually get out. Um, so these areas behind the units themselves here are also permeable pavers. So all around the edge are permeable pavers. We left the two minutes in the uh, areas where we think that there will be a lot of plow traffic in and out, so it seemed logical. Um, there's also two rain gardens that are proposed, one here and then one in between the units. These will be heavily vegetated with uh, native plantings and basically what they are is a bioretention cell, bioretention area that has a subsurface infiltration system. Uh, there's a media in the, uh, in the depression that allows the water to uh, infiltrate through the media into the subdrain system. There's also an emergency overflow in the event that we get a major storm event. We also have a high level, call it overflow, into an area drain with a um, curved top, uh, iron top that allows the water to get into those structures. That then goes to a, uh, a water quality unit, uh, which removes total suspended solids. That water quality unit then goes to a subsurface infiltration system on site, so we're handling all of our rainwater on site. Initially, we had talked about going to Pomeroy Terrace for some of our rainwater. Didn't need to end up doing that. We ended up sizing it um, adequately to accommodate the storm events. We've submitted our drainage plans to the conservation, to, I'm sorry, to the um, DPW engineering department. Um, that has been uh, reviewed. I believe we've received comments. All the comments seem to be house <coughs> Uh, but we can certainly get into any of those comments that you may have. So this is a general site plan and circulation to orient you to what's going on here, the architectural building. So this is the uh, building off Pomeroy. This is the, I'm sorry, I'm up here. Maybe that chair for, or your tripod. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So this, <coughs> will be for a moment. This building here. This building here on Pomeroy. We have a front elevation that we be looking from Pomeroy. And then you know, the other elevation is the right side. This is the rear, so this is what you would see from the parking lot. This bump out here, and this is bump out here. And again, the left elevation, which I believe would be the south elevation, looking this way. Okay? Um, the next unit, the building, is the building on the corner. This is pretty much the, 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 the same building. There's some additions. This report can get into the detail. Just give you an overall feel. This is one of the views. Uh, this is from Pomeroy. Looking at, looking at the building from Pomeroy. This is looking at the building from Bridge. And essentially working with the existing architecture and taking some of the structure off, some of the additions that weren't true with the existing structure. So are there two buildings like that on Bridge Street or sir, one? Sir, you could wait until the presentation's over. Oh, okay. This is a view from Bridge looking at the two duplexes. So you have the front porches, some architectural detailing. 
it's a little bit difficult to see in this rendering, but there are changes in material along the front of the building, uh, different cladding in these portions of the building, that broke up the porches and all that. I don't want to steal Zinke's thunder, drag him out here tonight, so he'll be able to answer any, any specific questions we may have. But um, So there's a total of 24 parking spaces on site, okay? We have 12 units, 24 parking spaces, so I think we're generally at the max that's actually allowed. Um, but hearing the conversation from the neighborhood earlier, I think it's probably good that we have those spaces. We can accommodate all of our parking on site. Um, we do not have a dumpster location. We think that this will be um, recycle and trash pickup receptacles for the units that will be coordinated. There will be a homeowners association for this. So this will actually be a condo community. Uh, Mr. Campanari anticipates that the unit on the corner will likely be retained by uh, his company and rented. Uh, but depending on, you know, if that's not you know, set in stone, depending on you know, what the uh, market bears, it may become condos as well. So um, right now, um, I think I covered most of it. Happy to get into any detail on the landscaping or any of the other aspects of the project. Were you going to have, any, was anyone else going to speak? Just, oh, okay, all right. Um, questions from the public? Okay, you uh, have one. Question or comments? Uh, Either one, it is okay. How much time do I have? <laughs> it is 9 o'clock, so just be mindful of your fellow citizens. Okay, I'll try to keep it brief. My name is Fred Zimnock. I live at 23 Palmer Terrace. I've been on a butter since 1975 or about 40 years. I've lived at several places, but living here has been a unique experience. I say I generally like the project. I like the grass pavers, the cut-throughs for the neighbors. Um, well, it's a bit hard from the drawings to tell. Well, I just saw the picture, so I can tell what the building on uh, Bridge Street looks pretty much, or at least reminiscent, of the original building that was there, uh, which is not like Shaw's Motel. Um, I, my, my main concern is the plants and the stockade fence adjacent to my property. Is it possible that the stockade fence could be pushed back for about six inches or a foot to allow for maintenance and repair? Or is it going to fit directly on a property line? Or is that an inappropriate question? No, that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, there's uh, our group, so we have around the perimeter, just so everybody's clear. So around the perimeter of the property, we have a six foot stockade fence. Um, and we also have arbor bite. So I don't think it would be a problem to accommodate you know, six inches. I don't know exactly six. where we put it. As long as there's room for maintenance or repair. Sure. Um, I'd like to share some of the history. I lived there in 70s and 80s, and there's a big concrete uh, wall at the front of the building that you're going to take down. Uh, during the 70s and 80s, there were probably about a half a dozen or more times where cars coming into uh, Northampton from Amherst after midnight actually crashed into that boundary. And they were doing that for about 10 years. Finally, the city looked at the problem to see what it was. And basically, of course, some of the drivers were DUI, but another problem was the fact that the motel sign was not illuminated. So drivers coming in from Amherst actually went into a black hole. Uh, so what the city did was it took the street lamps from the inside of the curve and put it on the outside of the curve. So people that are coming in from Northampton could actually see the building. So that seemed to help the problem. But nevertheless, people coming out of town late at night, probably DUI, still land up on two Pomeroy Terrace lawn or the adjacent building. My suggestion here is that you make sure the front of the building is illuminated if you take away that stone wall. Uh, the second peculiarity of that building is that for Shaw's Motel, uh, state snow plows actually plow that portion of Route 9. State snow plows are very big. Their blades are very big. They travel very fast. There's a tremendous amount of splash that goes onto the sidewalk in front of Shaw's Motel. Donald and I plowed the driveways and the sidewalks for almost 40 years. And I know he broke shear pins trying to get the splash off the sidewalk. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that uh, the residency of the two buildings, Shaw's Motel and the one on the corner, 
When I arrived in 75, Shaw's Motel was definitely derelict and only had three or four tenants with automobiles, the rest being homeless veterans and other welfare res residents. Mr. Shaw died around 1975. Then after the Mental Patient Advocacy Project and a civil commitment case of Gallup and Alden, about 600 patients from Northampton State Hospital were released. These two buildings, the one on a corner and Shaw's Motel became their home. Then in 1992, the Connor apartment building caught fire. No one was hurt, but the house was vacated. Mrs. Shaw eventually did repairs to the building, but my recall is that over the remaining years, the building was empty except for one family who occupied the top floor, and for about a year, there was a squatter on the first floor of that building. Sir, yep. did you have comments related to the project? Yeah, I'm getting to it. What I'm trying to point out is that over the 40 years that I've been there, there probably hasn't been more than about six cars parking there. And in the narrative, you say that you're reducing the parking to 12 vehicle trips per day. That's true architecturally, but historically, there's never been 12 vehicle trips there per day. Thank you. Other public I'm Becky Shannon, Two Palm Roy Terrace. Um, <coughs> I had a couple of questions. One was about the siding, the, what the siding material on the buildings is going to be, and then whether or not um, there will be any solar panels put up to, for energy conservation. And then my other comment is just that I have seen lots of rodents um, around the buildings and I hope that when construction begins that there's some kind of rodent control that goes on to, so that we don't flood the neighborhood with rodents looking for new homes. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry, you're, you're addressing it? Two Pomeroy Terrace. So you live across the street? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand. Any so comments? Answer, yeah, so sure. for the chair, I'd like to introduce the uh, project proponent. If you'd like to describe the, uh, the material. Yes, yeah, so the exterior siding is going to be hardy plank cement board. It's not going to be vinyl. Okay, good. It's going to be a cement product. And um, I was notified by the town that um, there were rodents. Thank you. So we baited it, and the town came out and inspected it and approved it. Yes, so that's why. Yes, ma'am. Um, Patricia Foreman, I'm at 2 Pomeroy Terrace, oh. to the picture of the house is right there that we all live in, the, the condo. My question is, who is going to be the property manager of this? If they're going to be condo kind of is it going to be you? I mean, are you going to... Well, so there'll be a condo association that'll be formed. Right. And that condo association will hire a project property manager. A property manager. Yeah. Okay. And you know that's a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are very few condo property managers. Right. There are. All right. Because yeah. we live it. Um, my other question is, I mean, that is a, a, as I think you were alluding to, that's a really dangerous corner. And we always have cars uh, ending up on our lawn um, and, you know, knocking out bushes and everything. And um, so I don't know what you can do about it, but about, you know, trying to have something that slows traffic you know, around that corner, but also that that is a horrible place to walk, um, crossing from our area right through Shaw's, um, between the cars trying to take a left, the drive, our driveway, everything else right there, it's really dangerous. So when you have your driveway further down with the 12 cars that we've been having to not have ever, or, you know, any cars, it's really going to be, um, have to be really careful getting in and out of there because we are the cut through for 91 on Power Terrace. So. Just to clarify, so it seems this is the other end of the pier okay. we just had. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. people yeah. that turn yeah. right out of the yeah. parking lot end up in front of your Yeah, and I didn't want to tell service. them that they're going to have 12 more cars, cars going, going their way. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Charlie and Leon, also at Two Pomeroy Terrace. Uh, <coughs> Charles O'Neill, Two Pomeroy Terrace. Um, so the the units are going to be how many bedroom units? Or it varies. It varies. So the 
the uh, the new house on Pomeroy would be two bedroom units. Okay. And then the, the I'm going to call it the apartment block on the corner. Right. For um, I guess the best word for it right now. Yeah. yeah. There's the the two bottom floor units are going to be one bedroom units. Okay. The second floor will be two bedroom units. The third floor will be two bedroom units. Okay. And then the new the new buildings on Bridge will be three bedroom units. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh. Three bedroom, three bedroom units. Yeah, other, my, my, my only other comment yeah. is is that it's not too much a site plan, but <coughs> the property as it currently exists, you can't walk down the sidewalk because it's stuff growing up. Oh yeah. So it would just be nice to have that. It would seem that we would have nowhere to go but up. So yeah. 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 Right. I mean, in the meantime, while we're waiting for all this to get approved or whatever, if that could be maintained a little bit better, so we can people can't walk on the sidewalk; they have to walk on the grass. So and just in terms of maintenance, you've got five windows that have are totally open that I've no, counted. Yeah. Yeah. On this, on the upper levels. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, they're well. Um, yeah, they're on the upper. Yeah, they're on the upper levels, levels yeah. but kind of not so great on the bottom. Other questions, comments, anyone? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Jerry Budger. I live at 127 Bridge Street, and my parents sold um, the Shaw's, the large building and the building behind it, and I spent the first three years of my life living in an apartment in the big building on the first floor, not facing Bridge Street, but facing behind. And um, I'm very glad that the building is being retained, the large one. Um, just wanted to say that I'm former president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, and this is a parcel that our ward has been looking at for a long, long time as a real gateway parcel to the downtown and city of Northampton. And it's really important that this parcel be developed with something that really looks good. And I can't tell from here, because I'm at an angle, but I really hope that we enforce some kind of niceness on this because this is what people see. It, it really looks pretty good to me, considering what was there now. Yes. But, it's, <laughs> but it's really important that this parcel be a welcoming parcel to the downtown. And I know the people, the, the members of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association feel very strongly about that. So I just hope that, but I, I believe the contractor and the people working for the contractor and hopefully with the planning board and everybody else that you will make sure that this is really a Class A project, that this really, really welcomes people to Northampton and shows them what we want our gateway to downtown to look like, because this is one of the last remaining gateway parcels that we can develop in Ward 3, so just ask you to do it. And I also, Mrs. Shaw put the wall up, and she put it up because cars were coming, careening around there, smashing into the motel. And you might want to put something up there because it is a very dangerous curve. Um, you know, I hate to see one of those <coughs> nice houses, you know, end up with the front end of an automobile in it. But that's, she had that problem a couple of times. And it's pretty much a once a year occurrence, at least. People crashing into our bushes. Yeah. Whenever there's a snipsnip. Other questions, comments for the board or the presenter? I have two, <clears throat> two questions. One, um, in terms of appearance, have, have you thought about introducing some variability into the color, not just uniform? I, I, I mentioned that to the, uh, the gentleman, uh, project proponent, and the architect. Uh, I think they're open. Yeah, they were open to suggestions. This, I mean, honestly, that's an aesthetic thing. I look at this and it looks like military. Yeah. Well, it's the way you know, the coming on. And it's also the color. You know, so yeah, it, it doesn't seem that it would cost any more to have no, no. three or four yeah, colors right. instead of one. Uh, the rule is no more than three. Okay. <laughs> there, there's a Just a suggestion. Yeah. The other question is um, how you comply with the environmental or the, with the, the zoning requirements for seven or more units? It says there, in your application. Right, I believe we addressed that in the narrative. Well, it says in the narrative that refer to the attached architectural drawings. Okay. So those are provided that you want me to go, you want me to, I can give Ziggy 
the criteria and have him make a case for that, or have all the drawings do that themselves? It wasn't, I mean, I, I at least couldn't figure it out. Couldn't get the answer from looking at the drawings. What number was that? Um, well, it's on page. Uh, I, I don't understand the question. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. Do you? Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Rob. Uh, Rob. Rob. Do you, do you understand the question? I think so. Okay. All right. So essentially over so seven right. units, there's a requirement that we meet a certain special permit criteria and that there's a number of uh, design uh, criteria that needs to be met. And massing, uh, I'm trying to find this section. Do you have, do you have this page? Next to the last, I mean, it, really yeah, is, it has to do with how you're meeting the right, street. Right, next to the last page, right, there are numbers. D and E. I'm not finding that. So the right. environment My and energy narrative? building mm -hmm. shall meet the following environmental yeah. standards. Yeah. D1, environment energy. Apologies. Go ahead. Oh, I just hear you say not applicable D1 as much. Yeah, these are. Can I borrow that for a minute? I think that may relate to the. So you, the D1 is the um, HERS, either meeting the HERS rating right. at least 25% yeah, right. lower than the current municipal standard. Um, or. Um, I could give him a moment to review that and then we maybe we could skip to the next question and go back to it. What are you going to do about the snow? How are you going to pound the snow? Yeah. Very carefully. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we anticipate that any any major storm events may have to be trucked off site. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Is there a total, am I right, that there's a total of 12 units? Yes, sir, proposed. And they're all two bedroom or? They, they vary. Um, now there's three bedroom units in the duplexes on, on uh, bridge. There's both singles and two bedrooms in the apartments on, uh, on the corner. And then the two bedrooms in the duplex on Pompano. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from the board at this point? Um, just following up on some uh, staff related comments but I just throw those out and you can respond to them sure. um, exterior building lights we provided a cut sheet for basic lights of so, well, I'm going through this is the light fixture that we're proposing in the parking lot there's four lights they're mounted on 10 foot high poles there's a uh, this is the only the only exterior light that they're planning on the outside of the buildings near the entrances and this this is a sample of the fence your fence probably stained <coughs> in a similar color to that to the house depending on what those are activity units depending on what those are finalized as there's a bench yep. okay uh, there was a question about parking lot lights interfering with some RVID growth we adjusted the plan to um, we adjusted some of the RVID slightly to accommodate the lights okay based on the As far as the aesthetic makeup of the exterior, the, the hardy siding and choose of colors or architectural shingles and whatever it might be, what you know, what is our uh, what can be asked for? Or you know, if we want more colors, that's easy to say, but hard to we're not going to pick colors. Right, and you can't. I mean, there's nothing in the zoning that says the board can dictate color. So um, I think the I think the best you can do is know Encourage. that the applicant heard mm -hmm. the comment mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, could take it under advisement, but you don't have any jurisdiction to say you have to use three colors and they have to be this palette or whatever. <coughs> I think it's important because just 
like the recent projects that we looked at on Pleasant Street, uh, the housing projects as a gateway into Northampton. Right. This too, as, as oh, yeah. somebody said, is very much as right. bad as it's been for as long as it's been. It's still a gateway into the city, and so. Um, you know, I applaud the applicant for this, and I think it looks great. But I think we have an opportunity to, you know, to establish this gateway. For the have it be greater. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think if the applicant uh, is hearing us, there is a desire <coughs> for an architectural, you know, oomph as far as. Uh, I would love for someone to, to give me the colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're not allowed to do that. No, I know. I can do it though. You can talk. None of us really, none of us really like the colors. Okay. But he, Matt we had, just put some color. Matt had to choose them. So it's the very blah, and the picture also was taken in the winter. So the whole thing is very blah. <laughs> You know, it's not going to end up being that. Yeah. Right. We'll if we can trend away from a lot, and yeah. toward, uh, <laughs> we'll like wow. I say, with an architectural shingle, something with substance. But we yeah. got some yeah. architectural shingles so and forth. some hardy siding on yeah. there. It's all going to be hardy plank and uh, architectural shingles uh, on you know, the, uh, the, the ground. The shakes, the shakes. The yeah. shakes yeah. will be shakes. But we could come up with any kind of combination. Well, of we colors. are supposed to be becoming a historical district. I mean, is this property part of that? It, or? Yes. Is this yeah. part? Yes. So it is. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't think we're not where we can say that you know it has to look this way. <coughs> given that some of the oldest homes in Northampton are right there. No, they're white. Yeah. No, ours is no. light bluish gray. Yeah. Our, that yeah, yeah. Uh, one, that condo, the second picture. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I can stop the. The, the, discuss, the aesthetic discussion because that's not within our purview. Okay, uh, but it sounds like that he's hearing your yeah, input, yeah. And, I, and I think we'll be responsible in that way. I think Rob had a comment. Yeah, just one. You know, it's just a suggestion. But you know, one of the things that I noticed is you know all the units have the same color scheme. Right. Maybe changing the color scheme. You know, so maybe there's two colors on the first unit. Maybe there's two colors on the second. Maybe two colors on the third. But they're different. Yeah, so, right. they're not, yeah. so they're not. Right. The same. So they're not the same. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think that's what people project looks more like you're coming into, you know, there's a couple of nice... It looks like individual places. homes versus institutional. Or right. Right. Exactly. Carolyn, you wanted to clarify something. Yeah, so you, um, Mark, you um, talked about the different gateways. So we do have different design standards depending on the district. So on Pleasant Street, that is another gateway, but that's in a uh, portion of Pleasant Street is in the central business architecture. Right. Um, or central business district that also has a central business architecture review. So that is a whole different host right. of architectural right. details that are required for applicants to submit, just like for the um, church property, actually, that's going through that process. Mm -hmm. um, that even under that review, there's no color jurisdiction. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in this case, um, there are little, there are a few elements under your special permit criteria that you can look for, but not to the level of architectural detail of the type of shingles versus hardy plank. But you can, I mean, but you can encourage the applicant to do that, but you can't, but there, right. there's nothing in the zoning that says that the board has to approve each one of those little details. Could, could we say, instead of encouraging, could we say, uh, for example, at least the windows facing Bridge Street to be trimmed out versus you know, the siding hitting the window and not oh, no, the trim. <coughs> it's all I think, be oh, okay. So I think you could um, do that because the piece in the design care standards is that you want to make sure that it fits into the neighborhood character. And of course, this there, there being older homes um, in the neighborhood, they have that type of character. So I think that would be a valid comment to I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say how to design the building or what right. color it should be. But if, if but that to the extent the that is is reasonable, if you could take the architectural cues from two Pomeroy Terrace and apply them to the buildings as designed, as far as the, the trim details, the coloration, the, the shingles, and so forth, I think that would go a long way to, to making this exact design differentiating right, the buildings too. Yeah. Well, even the two new buildings are better than the renovation of the existing. Right. So how do we, without being unduly burdensome, how do we enforce something like that? Well, you could put a condition, I mean, you just said it, um, I think, pretty well, is using the trim details for the window, um, the, the um, depth, depth and extent of those that are on 
two complementarians. Yeah. Right. 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 So for the bridge, bridge street mm -hmm. facades, for all three of those structures, you can even. It's right. more than just the windows, though. I mean, the roof details, the the, um, the corner columns. boards, the. But like, don't Aaron, what I hear you saying is that we could put a condition up that it must, you know, adhere to the neighborhood standard or something like that. Well, I think I mean, it should be a little bit more detailed because I think um, that's the way the lease language is now. And so I think they put, you know, front porches and over roof overhangs. But if there's a little bit of character, it's not quite there that that is an element in the surrounding structures. You might want to call those out specifically. So. If there are more than, you know, just the window trim details that you want to identify on a, you know, surrounding structure. Because these, I want to speak. Because these are rendering, and it's hard to put every piece of trim in these drawings before we get anywhere. But you know, we're going to be we're going to make these buildings have corner boards and have nice trim around the windows. Mm -hmm. We're going to make them look nice just hard to put onto these renderings yeah. to kind of show that. That's yeah. commendable and I think that's great, but I, this is our only opportunity to make sure that happens. Okay. So rather than say, uh, don't worry about it, we're yeah. going to do it, I want to make sure. I, I would like to know specifically though too, just so I wasn't guessing like I like, sure. corner boards and window trends. Could I ask a question to the chair? Corner boards? Yes sir. Is, is it fair fair to say that we're talking generally um, about deficiencies in the, in the uh, trim work on the existing building? Yeah, the other one. It appears as though these two have it, that's going to address. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah it's better. Better. I mean, so yeah, yeah again, it's a render. And even, you know, the Tom Roy Terrace is a little bit more basic, not, not as yeah. ornamental, but again, they're, you know, I think the scale and everything's been addressed a little bit more. So yeah. I think, so just, you know, maybe we, if we were to hone in on. Can we say that it's similar make it type and yeah. quality yeah. of trim as the two new buildings? Sure. Uh, yes, sir. So yeah, I just had a question in terms of what, how, what was the decision process in terms of the, renovating that one building as opposed to getting rid of all the buildings? Was it? Uh, I think it's fair to say that the financial feasibility okay. uh, was based on, you know, uh, that's what it was based on. It actually made a lot of sense to keep that building from a financial standpoint. Some buildings, then they had a fire. Okay. No, I'm just the curious. sense of taking it down. <coughs> People are comfortable. I'm gonna ask someone to move to close public hearing. Okay. Can I just oh. first ask for uh, my my recollection? The, the question that I asked before. My recollection of, of the zoning that's the new zoning for seven units or more requires that they comply with certain um, environmental or unit size requirements. Right. Or or affordability. That's true. Yes. So don't they have to show that? I, I don't see that they've complied with that. So. Um, they um, have made a statement that they will comply with the energy, so there's two different ones. One that relates to energy standards, the other one relates to either size or affordability. Right. So they've indicated on the plans that they have, um, that they're meeting the size criteria as opposed to the deeded affordability requirements. So it's less than 1,200 square feet for the units. Um, um, so they're meeting that one. In terms of energy, it's not clearly spelled out. Um, I did recommend a condition that, because the energy the codes will be evaluated at the building permit level, um, that the condition is that they present how they're meeting the energy standards at the time they submit the building permit. The uh, building commissioner will have to review that to make sure that those um, standards are upheld. So we can we would make that as a requirement and they would just have to right. show in a later date that they come along. Right, mm -hmm. for the time that they finally do the, the final design. If I may, I mean, there's no way we cannot insulate that building according to the new energy codes that we have in place. Because it's been gutted down to the studs at this point anyway, so it's going to have to be a new construction code. We, we don't need to make that official, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Zoning, but I think it just to clarify that at the point that they submit the building permit, they show that they're just telling you that they're going to meet it. Right. So it's just sort of the next step. Uh, how about the, is it required for lead to have construction goal? No, it's either lead or the 25% okay. okay. lower okay. than right. hers. Okay. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, before it lets you start run through the conditions. Oh, sure. Um, which I think are very few. Uh, there were some more, so comments came in from DPW, DPW and yeah. again, um, Rob noted that a lot of them were just details, cleaning up the detail sheets and the meeting the code requirements for um, um, utility connections and, and um, there were some questions about um, details relative to the infiltration or the pavers. The only other one item I want to um, note that would be appropriate for condition is beyond that is that DPW wants to see an operations and maintenance plan for the stormwater um, system prior to issuance of the building permit. Because this doesn't require a separate stormwater permit, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So there's not, you know, that separate review. Okay. Um, yeah, and then there's, so there was another issue actually about, um, I think I sent along about the tree protection of that one tree that's really um, close to the sidewalk. The other piece is on the other, on this most recent um, several projects, DPW has been recommending structural soils for this type of situation. They're not replanting a tree, but they're, I mean, um, I think there's, there's, there's an issue with that one tree just because it's sandwiched so close to the sidewalk now and they're going to be re placing the sidewalk, the city may require that um, there's a new material, well, it's not that new, but it's called Luxa Pave, and it's sort of a tree, in lieu of a tree grade that goes near sidewalks, or, um, adjacent to sidewalks. DPW may require that as part of the sidewalk reconstruction. So that doesn't have to be a condition, but I just want to put it out there that um, the standards for that are going to be a little bit tighter because it's a city street tree. But that'll come from them. Well, as long as you're okay with that, that you know that they need to comply with the um, city standards for tree protection and um, construction around city trees. So we had to prior to demolition, tree protection for the city street shall be installed and inspected by staff. Uh, in lieu of traffic mitigation, is a five thousand dollar fee paid. Uh, prior to the issuance of a CFO, the applicant should also submit as bills for lighting. And the applicant shall submit with the building permit information showing compliance with the energy standard criteria. And then the DBW comments, the ONM for the stormwater system. And then, still struggling with this, a, uh, um, a general compliance for all the, 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 that all three buildings are consistent architecturally with. What, corner boards, window trim, I don't know how to, how it's far the neighbor, the, the neighbor, or with the, the, with the surrounding, you know, <coughs> do we have to be that specific? But you can say all three buildings shall incorporate facade details that are consistent with um, the budding parcels. Were the yeah, two new Or a two Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, I don't know if you want to just, um, Well, is that going to get them in trouble? The two Pomeroy Terrace is extremely and then I just want to clarify for this traffic mitigation just that um, because there are some accounting for the existing conditions um, that um, my recommendation would be that they would be able to get underway with construction for um, seven of the units before traffic mitigation would be required as certificate of occupancy because they already have, right. so it says essentially you're giving credit for um, seven of the units so that then they it wouldn't come due to tell the CEO for the eighth unit. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Really too much. Can we just clarify that? So is that for, is that just the payment? Mm -hmm. The payment in lieu of traffic mitigation. Okay. Now you mentioned that there's some recent decision from the AG's office about that. Does that affect us at all? So no, there's another issue about the AG about work in the public right of way. Okay. Um, that depending on whether you um, meet a certain threshold, you have to comply with the um, work on public property. Do you go through the public bidding process for work in the public right of way? 
so the city would determine whether or not you're hitting those thresholds depending on your construction costs that you submit for sidewalk, um, utility connections, that kind of thing. Utility connections. Yes. Wow. It depends on the connection type. Really? And that has to be hammered out. It's not to prevailing wage and everything else. That was something new that the AG has notified cities about literally in the last two months. There was one other condition which um, honestly I didn't, I didn't follow strictly was on the plants, on, on the stockade fence, the request okay. to move back a little bit of maintenance. So to, to keep the fence six inches off the property, off the property line. Which Rob indicated would not be a problem. I believe it's. From what I'm looking, you know, the scale I'm looking at, I believe it's already at least six inches off. But okay. we certainly can, can we can make sure that it stays six six inches off. No. Uh, motion to move over. Oh, it's public. Can I ask one really quick question? Yeah. Uh, just to go, I don't want to go back on stuff, but just with regard to <coughs> design elements and such, if there is, if the Ward Three Neighborhood Association is trying to become a historic, or this area is trying to become if they have any existing guidelines similar to what some of this is architecture, they don't have any. Okay, I was going to say maybe that can also okay. be provided to the applicant. I forgot I said. Okay. Motion closed public. Or, no, yes. sorry. Oh, wait. Do we say something? something? Sure. Uh, we're, we're both neighbors, and one of the things that we're interested in is when will destruction construction start? Are we looking this year, next year, five years out? I would think that construction will, I'd like to do the demolition of the, of the motel fairly soon. And I would think that the construction of the existing building on the corner would start this fall. But the new construction on the other units, not until springtime. Okay, so motel first this year? I would like to get the motel down, yes. This year, okay. The building inspector wants it down. <laughs> we all want it down. We all want it down. We all want it down. And motion to close public. Seconded by Tess. All in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Are we ready to make a move? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the special permit and site plan for 12 residential units at Five Town Lower Terrace and 87 Bridge Street, formerly the Shaw's Hotel, and the map by the 32A-185 and 186. Seconded by Ann. All in favor? Thank you. 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 Thank an A and R to so that's what this is. Will you uh, vote to yes, endorse? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Motion for the minutes. Yeah. Don't know what minutes you're approving. <laughs> Second. <laughs> oh, there you go. You got it. Yeah. Approved. Wait, who did that? Was so bad. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Thank you, everyone.